Welcome back to another episode of Feeling the Healing with Poltsy. I'm super pumped to have my, today's, my, today's guest, um, Bailey McCachron. Um, always this little tongue twister for me there. Uh, she is um, a fast pitch softball pitcher, started at University of Tennessee, uh, just graduated from UNC. She spent her last two years there. I tried to represent with some colors. I was not going to wear orange as a UGA grad, so I can promise you that. In her high school career, uh, she had 364 innings pitched with an ERA of 1.83, 434 strikeouts, very impressive. Uh, opposing batting average was uh, about 200. Um, she was the Forsyth County Pitcher of the Year, junior and senior year. Uh, in her NCAA Division I uh, career, uh, she um, had 162 innings pitched, um, combined ERA of 3.56, 78 strikeouts, a record of 6-8 and eight with two top 25 wins. And uh, just to let people know, the percentage of high school athletes that go on to play NCAA Division I softball is less than 1.6%. So, uh, Bailey, thanks for being here today. I wanted to find an awesome person that could represent the softball world and no one better but you. <laughs> thanks um, for having me. I'm glad you're here. So, tell me about, let's just start with growing up. I mean, when did you start playing softball? Yeah, I mean, I started at T-ball, kind of like everybody does, and then I really got into softball when I was like eight years old. That's when I could start pitching. Uh, I actually really didn't even want to be a pitcher. I wanted to be a first baseman, but my coach said that I was a lefty, and I uh, said, <laughs> yeah. you're a lefty, you're pitching. So uh, I got into pitching around eight and kind of took off from there, played at travel ball, high school ball, all the way up through. Um, got into a little basketball and tennis as well, but softball was just what I stuck with and loved. So you did, you did the multiple sports. So you did play mm -hmm. some tennis. Um, and some basketball, you said. Yeah, not very good at basketball. That didn't, <laughs> that didn't go far. <laughs> it was just something to do. Yeah. So when, so the T-ball, roughly what, five years old, and that's just normal baseball. That's just, that's just kind of baseball, not softball. They put it on the T and Hit you it run and as far as you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I'm sure. When did you roughly? So when you're doing, when you're eight, and you're doing. That's technically fast pitch softball. You're starting to do it mm -hmm. then, right? I mean, when did you start learning that, okay, or your parents started or, or a coach started recognizing, you know, this, you know, she's got some talent. And when you start making that transition of, okay, let's, we maybe get some lessons here. We need to get someone else to start fostering some, you know, skills. Like, when did that start happening? I started taking lessons Pretty much the whole time I was pitching, I always went to somebody else for lessons. But I would say in terms of like realizing that I was getting good enough to play at any level in college was around high school. I was kind of late. I didn't really realize how good I was until colleges started looking at me. And then that was when like freshman year of high school, it started to like, okay, we need to sit down and figure out who I am as a pitcher and work on it and make it better. And see what I can do. So do you think when you got, I mean, I was always curious and I think as a kid, you start playing a sport and you just, I think you play it and you're good at it. I mean, did you always feel like you had a passion at a young age or was it something to do? And then all of a sudden when you got to middle school, like now you're really passionate about it or was it younger age? I was always very passionate about it because I never even really thought I was good enough to go to college for it. I just loved pitching. So I did it. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I had people looking at me, and I was passionate before that even happened. So I think it was just something I I was always passionate about softball. It wasn't people looked at me for college softball, and then I became passionate about it. I got you. Um, so, yeah, let's talk more about that as far as your path unfolding to that collegiate kind of career. When you... Um, I mean, did that start up like in your junior year? I mean, I don't know when they start recruiting. I mean, when do they start? When they when I, like when they started looking at you, you're like, wait a second, I got these schools. Yeah. I mean, when did that start happening? Well, it's kind of weird. I started my freshman year of high school, and then my junior year of high school, they put in a new rule that we can't be recruited until our junior year of high school. 
So I started earlier than most kids will now. Oh. So it, yeah. So like, was like maybe your freshman year of high school, they were starting they, to I was eyeball you? going on visits and. Really? Mm -hmm. So wow, that was pretty early on then. Yeah. That's exciting for a, I'm sure exciting for a, <laughs> a freshman in high school. Yeah, I mean, looking back on it, I had no idea what I wanted to do in college. It was, I was just going to look at schools at that point, but. It was uh, cool. Yeah, I'm sure it was. So then when you got to junior and senior, now they're really, yeah, now you're starting to yeah. narrow it down. Once that rule went into place, um, it was very much narrowing down, like, what I wanted to major in and kind of what would be a good fit overall. Were the recruiting trips fun? They were, yeah. <laughs> they bring you in and treat you like a rock star a little uh, bit? and Yeah, for the most part, yeah. It was, I mean, you go to football games, you get front row seats, you get to go on the field. Got to meet Peyton Manning, like, he just... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Peyton Manning said, you got to come to Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, and that's where it you worked. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, and, this, and when I was talking to you earlier, I didn't think about that, I guess, as, as a even a pitcher in, in collegiate, you really don't bat. So you have a designated hitter for you. So there's really no batting stats in college. <laughs> Not for me, no. Um, I get a hit in the fall, which is usually just fun. And people always, when I come up to bat, people are cheering so loud because it was just, I was just having fun in the fall, but not in the spring by but any means. In high school, you had almost just shy of a 300 average, which is for a pitcher. I mean, you know, man, most pitchers would be, yeah. be thrilled with that. Um, on base percentage, over 400%, or 400, that's pretty good. So, you, you know, got a few walks in there, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, 59 hits, 48 RBIs, five home runs, 15 doubles. So you could pound the ball a little bit, right? Yeah. I mean, hitting was never something I had to think about. I just did it. Pitching was my thing that I thought about. Yeah. Hitting was just a side thing. But Well, um, so one thing that I'm always curious about, and, you know, all my guests that I have, I always feel like, you know, they've, it's always like they have their, their, it's in their DNA. You know, there's a lot of talented fast pitch softball players. But, you know, that next level, you know, like for you, obviously, this was something that your, your, part of your DNA was, yeah, this is, this is what I can do. And I'm talented at it. I'm a lefty. You know, I'm sure that helped too. But, um, I mean, obviously, you were, you were gifted to pitch. And, I mean, do you ever, you ever feel like you ever think about much of that? That this is part of. Wait a second. This is kind of who I was gifted to be. Kind of. I mean, yeah. Every time I go to play, it's just kind of cool. It's just like, wow. Like, even if I'm not, even if I'm just in the dugout, it's like, wow, I'm good enough to be here. Like, this is cool. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of. You work so hard at it, so to actually make it there was. You realized how good you actually were. Yeah. In those moments. Like I said, it's less than one point six percent, which there's a lot of nationwide, there's a lot of um fast pitch softball players mm -hmm. out there and and uh that's that's a small percentage. So kudos to you for you know, the t the time you put in, the, the talent you have and the work you put in, the work ethic. Um I know you're proud of that. Um so what is next for Bailey as far as softball? Well, right now I am in about two weeks heading off to Germany to play in their pro league. Um, I'm going there to help coach some of their pitchers as well as play and get them to their championship series to the team I'm playing for. So, Have you ever been to Germany? I have. I studied abroad there last year. Oh, okay. So at least yeah. you kind of know your way around and you know A little bit, yeah. what to eat and what not to eat. I don't know. I've never been to Germany. So. All the food there is good. <laughs> <laughs> It may not be good for me to go there then. <laughs> um, all right, so when you get back, what's your thoughts there? Well, um, I initially was taking a gap year. Um, probably going to go to grad school, but before that, I will be hiking the Appalachian Trail oh, with my dad. Okay, with you and your dad. Yep. So that's that's ex that's that's going to be um. It's going to take some DNA for that. Yep. I hope your dad's got the DNA. <laughs> We've been training, so okay. 
you know, he's, we've told too many people at this point to back out. So you gotta we're do doing it. it. You got to do it. You got to make him do it. Yeah. yeah. He's doing it. I have it. no doubts that you can do it, but yeah. we'll, I think he can do it too. You're just going to have to nudge him along. And then if you do grad school, are you looking to get into coaching or is that a thought about what you want to do? It really wasn't in my plan until I had to hang up my cleats. And now I'm like, wow, I don't want to leave softball. <laughs> so I'm going to go to grad school, hopefully continue BME and then grad assist and see if I do want to coach and kind of figure out which path I want to do. I'm sure that is because that's been really like your identity. It's been part of your, I mean, it's been your, your identity yeah. for really your whole life. So I'm sure it is kind of weird when all of a sudden you're like, wait a second. I'm kind of, yeah. I don't know if I want to do that yet. So I imagine it would, and I'm sure with your talent and your knowledge that it would, it would not be a bad thing for you to be a coach. I guess you just have to see what doors open. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. I, I love pitching, so I would definitely just coach pitching and continue that. But. So as part of your I mean, I know high school, there's probably a, there's a difference between high school, obviously, and the collegiate level. As far as the mental and the physical demands um, and just taking care of injuries and taking care of your body, I mean, what, is that, what does that look like for you? Like, if you had to talk to young people and you're saying, okay, when you get to this level, this is what we put in. This is what we do. I mean, you're, like, daily, I mean... Like, talk us through kind of your normal in-season mental health, physical health, all nutritional health, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Well, I mean, physically you go from three practices a week, maybe one lesson a week on top of that, to four-hour practices six days a week, and on top of that, a workout every single day. Uh, and then you go to class, and then you go to treatment, I mean, you pretty much, even if you're not in treatment for an injury, you're doing something to prevent an injury. Um, so it is a, it is a full-time job. It's 40 hours a week that you are either working or preventing yourself from getting injured. Yeah, for, for, it's so. for sure a commitment. It's, yes. you know, it's not like that you can, well, don't feel like doing that today. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, no. it's, no it's, a, like it's now a commitment and I wouldn't want to call it a job because for people that are passionate about it, you're going to enjoy totally. doing it, but it's still a lot of work. It is, yeah. Um, so after your, let's say you pitch, like what is what is your arm recovery look like? Like what is your typical, like what do you do for, or what do they do for you for arm recovery? Um, I found out that I really like the Normatec arm sleeve, and I just put that on, and I never get sore again. So every time I pitch, I put that on, and I'm good for the next day. Um, I think it's depend dependent on each pitcher. Some pitchers just love a thing of ice, and some don't like to do anything, and some <laughs> just stretch and they feel great. But I found out that Norma Tech just worked really good for me. Those are hot items right yeah. now. The co the college level of Norma Tech, and we we use them in therapy and in our clinics, um, and great devices. That's I was introduced to them, introduced to them through collegiate ice mm -hmm. hockey, and got to try them on my legs because I use them the a lot for are great. yeah recovery. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's, I got to get some of those. And patients love them. So that's cool that you, or I didn't yeah. even know that. I like the arm one. That one's good. I don't even need to try to get some of those. I only have the legs ones. So <laughs> um, let's talk about your injuries. Yeah. So injuries you've had at a younger age, all the way up any through college and kind of how you dealt with that. Yeah. My first ma like major injury was high school. My freshman year, I had the small fracture in my back. Pars, pars, pars fracture. fracture, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of the first time that I like had to like seriously take care of myself and force myself to stop pitching. I've been used to just having little knickknacks and like just pitching through it. That was the first time I had to like stop and rest, and I think that alone was hard. But I will say, from that injury, I learned. Knock on wood. Thankfully, I actually really did not have any injuries in college because I learned how to be proactive. Um, yeah. so that was, I mean, I, I did get lucky. I did not have any serious injuries throughout college. And that's, but. that is a big one for, you know, pitchers yeah. we see in therapy. I mean, we do see the back injuries, but we also see the shoulder problems mm -hmm. too, which can be sometimes, you know, career ending injuries, unfortunately, um, with either labral tears or, um, you know, 
you know, some, some muscle injuries or tendon injuries. But so I think that's key is what you just said is the preventative type of measures of taking care of your arm, taking care of your body, nutrition, whether it's, you know, and I don't know what they do at the college level, if they do post game nutritional stuff mm -hmm. or, you know, if that's something that's on your radar, if that's like, you know, Hey, I'm a, Got to get my protein in or whatever. <laughs> I will say I learned how to eat on a scheduled, like, protein at this time, carbs at this time. They, uh, before meal, before games, after games, they tell you kind of like, this is what we recommend you eating. This is, they'll feed us like that as well as like what we need individually, what we need. Um, I definitely learned a lot about nutrition there as well. And I think that's a big one. Um, we were talking with the Braves um the, their executive chef, and we talked about some of that. That it's funny how at the at the younger age, you know, there's there's paying money for lessons, and you're paying mm -hmm. money for this, and you're paying money for travel, and you're paying. But sometimes the nutrition at the high school level and the lower younger levels is kind of something that gets not really yeah. brought up, and at that's probably. And it probably wasn't when you were in high school. Probably they don't even really talk about it. It's like, well, I guess after the game, let's go get a Dairy Queen. And <laughs> It's hard when it's right there by your field. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I think that's kind of the message that I want to get out to some of these younger athletes. Yeah. Like maybe you need to start thinking about some of the nutrition that for muscle recovery mm -hmm. and your protein, whether it's, you know, a chocolate milk or whatever. That's a big one that sometimes mm -hmm. athletes use. And we talked about that a couple episodes ago. So what advice would you, I mean, we're going to get down to the, what, what advice would you tell like young softball athletes, you know, as, as far as telling them, like, what would you say as far as if you had to go back and tell yourself something, yeah. like, what would that be? I think the one thing I wish I knew before going into college was just better understanding who I was as a pitcher and sticking to it. Um, I mean, at the same time, you have to be coachable, but I think I was to the point where I was too coachable to where I took every single thing and tried to apply it, and I lost who I was as a pitcher in college. So I think just my advice to myself before going to college would be, like, figure out who you were. Like, I was a movement pitcher. I would have told myself to just trust my movement and go and not try to be a perfect spot pitcher. Yeah. And I think if I could tell younger athletes, I would say just – figure out who they are as a pitcher and or as a player, position player, and just stick to it and love that part of them. I mean, I think that's key. I mean, again, it goes back to if that's who you're designed to be and that's that's how you how you mm -hmm. do your position. Sometimes it doesn't like if it's a position player, it doesn't have to be pretty. It could be a diving catch and you flip your feet over your head but you still make the play. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean that it has to be just perfect, but if you can do it right and or make it make the play, then that's who you are. And um, I think that's I think that's critical. Again, it's a your DNA is movement. Mm -hmm. That's who you are. So, all right. So I like to end up with keys to success. Everybody's got a little something. They always can say, you know, hey, be who you are, or you know, always tell the truth, or whatever. So what are the, the Bailey McCachron keys or strategies to success? I think if I had to pick one, uh, finding little things to just celebrate and enjoy. Um, that was one thing my dad always told me after every game, like, this may have gone wrong, but what's one thing you did right? Like, you know, just focus on little things that you did right or little things that you can uh, celebrate and enjoy, and it'll keep you loving the game. I love that. So there you go. The Bailey's, her, uh, her uh, keys to success, find the little joys in life. That's awesome. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me.